Hi, I'm Sherman Rowland with Highland Park, and I'm going to show you how to take apart an Everclean here and replace the motor. Um, I'll do a subsequent video about replacing the bearings in the motor because in this particular case, the bearings are bad in this motor, but this will take you through the basic steps of how to do it. So first step you want to do here is inside, this is the older versions, inside the throat of the Everclean, there's a plug. And that plug is what blocks the oil from coming into the uh, through the dam. And you'll see what I mean by dam when I open this up. So first step I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this plug out. So the second step I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually then line up to find the set screws on the inside. There's two set screws to hold the drum in. So I'm going to put my uh, tool in here. And uh, I looked at it previously with a little flashlight. And uh, I just find those set screws and we'll undo them. These hold the, uh, the um, drum onto the uh, motor shaft. So I'll just take my first one. There's two on here. I just need to find my second one. You do that by turning. All right, now I've got my two set screws loose on the drum. The next step you want to do is I'll move this right over. You can see I'm going to take the four filister head screws off the top of this um, because our next step is we're going to then use force to knock the drum loose from the motor shaft. And it's a simple technique. And yeah, once you see it, you'll be like, okay, I know I can do that. So hold on. What you see down here is I've got a couple of two by fours I'm just sticking on the floor. And I'm spacing them apart so that that drum is going to be roughly in the middle of that. And then I'm going to take the Everplane upside down against these two two by fours. I'm going to lift it up. And that pulls the drum out. So you see, pretty straightforward thing. Once I've gone and I've loosened the shaft, and I'll show you a little bit here. You can see I've loosened the two little plugs there. Then I'll just hammer this thing down and that slips off of the shaft uh, from those two set screws. So the next step is I need to then take my motor apart. So we'll show you how to do that. So inside the unit, you'll see there's essentially this casting. There's the bottom of the motor there. There's this casting here. In through that casting is that plug, the plug that you can see through the throat. It's got some, um, some uh, Permatex on there, uh, ultra black, but there's a, essentially that dam there is what keeps your oil from coming out. Now, if you get oil going through here too fast, it can overflow this dam and go down into your motor. And that's why we put that ball valve on the pump, because depending on how hot it is, if you're really in a hot environment, your oil viscosity goes way down, super thin, and it's easier to pump more volume through and then it'll overload that dam because it can only flow so fast through that hole so that's part of what you're doing is you're mitigating the flow of the oil coming back into the saw by slowing down the pump volume all right we're going to go ahead and take the motor off of this now i'll show you how to do that so i'm just going to use an impact drive and uh, take these bolts out which is held on with four bolts now there's also it's wired on the switch box so we'll have to take that loose too um, which i'll do in just a second Now obviously when you put this thing back together, you don't want to um, use an impact drive because it's an easy way to strip your, uh, your um, threads out. So we'll come take that switch box loose here. Get myself some Phillips out of my toolbox. Just held on with four Phillips screws. And when you put the switch back, back on, you do want to make sure that you, um, that you um, Permatex in there. The Ultra Black is really the tool, the, the gasket sealer that we use for most of our repairs and also for assembly because it's just really good. Uh, you do need a clean uh, surface for it though. If you want to use some rubbing alcohol or some other kind of solvent, make sure that you get a good uh, seal. Okay. And sometimes that's a little tight. 
of our mallet. And there we go. We got our switch box loose. We got our motor loose. Now, at this point in time, the motor can just slip right off. And then there you have the Everclean casting, which is basically one casting. It's got that big, uh, the big ring in there. Now, the newer ones have a disc that goes over top of that that does reduce the amount of splatter. So if you open yours up and there's a, uh, there's a stainless steel disc, that was added on later to further reduce the splattering issue. It's not essential. When you back down the valve, it's fine. Um, that was added so in case yours looks different. So now what we'll want to do is we'll want to get into our motor. So we're going to take these four bolts off and, uh, and then I'll show you how to get into the motor for being able to replace the bearings. So here I initially use a wrench to get these loose before I use an impact driver. one's a little bit mucky because it's had some uh, oil going through it. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. The oil running through the motor is really not going to cause any big problem. Um, some people get freaked out about, oh my god, there's oil coming through my motor, but it actually is not going to affect it much of anything. I'm going to get this on here. have to open up our other side of the motor here so we got to get at the nuts on the back end so you'll take this uh, guard off here and So there's my nuts on the, the back. So we'll go at it from the back end um, of the motor. It's going to be the easiest way to take this apart. Just loosen these up because that shaft is just turning on me. Um, so this is an 8 millimeter. So that one is going to come out really easy. And, uh, and this one. There's also, you'll notice there's a clip ring here. I'm going to need to pull this fan off of here, off, off the back of the motor, with a clip ring pliers. So you will need a, some type of clip ring pliers to remove that fan. There's a clip ring pliers right there. Don't overextend that clip ring or you can damage it. Now getting these fans off can be a little tricky because i got to get a plier. It's kind of a press on those, so I have not a pliers and then I get a screwdriver and kind of help push this thing out without destroying the fan. If you destroy your fan, you do have replacements. So the fan is off, there you go. And let's get the rest of our screws loose here. This one here. Okay. All right. Now we should be able to get our motor apart. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just work to get this a little bit loosened up here off of this back, back side. There we go. You can see I'm kind of tapping it to get it to move a little bit. 
And now the whole armature is going to want to come out. Now what I want to do is I want to actually pull this rear cover off. Um, I can pull the front off right now. Just using a soft mallet here so I can get this to come loose. Right. There we go. There we go. So there's my, get this thing to move. There it goes. All right. So now I've pulled my main armature off. That bearing shot too. Um, I can just leave this the way it is um, right now. Um, so all we got to do now is we just got to take this bearing and this bearing off. That's pretty easy because we have a press right here. So let me get the press set up and then we'll press these new bearings on. So here you see I've got a couple of metal plates that are holding the cross here. And I will go ahead and press this bearing out. Alright, there we go. Alright, so those are my two bad bearings right here. So um, reversing it is just reversing the direction. So I'm gonna go get some bearings and we'll put some bearings back together. All right, so unfortunately, I don't have some really nice press blocks to press this stuff with. So um, there's a couple ways to get these bearings pressed back in. The one way to do it is if you have a press, uh, a nice round tube that goes in here, you want to be pressing against that inner flange. You don't want to press on the outside. So I need to find something long, a tube to go in here to press that, probably a piece of pipe that I can cut down. So that's my first need is a way of pressing these back on. So I'll get that piece of pipe, cut it down, and then we'll go and we'll press these bearings on. Okay, so we've got something that we can press against here. So we're going to press this bearing on. And I've got it positioned here, level. And I'm just going to press them down. And then I'll release just a little bit, let things straighten it slightly off. All you're doing is you're just shouldering that bearing against the shaft there. So you can see I've got that pressed on. Do the same thing this on the other side. Okay, I've got my other bearing. So I've got two new bearings on this thing. Now we're just going to reassemble the motor. Now one thing you want to pay attention to, there is a thrust washer. You want to make sure you position that back in. So what you'll see there is I got the thrust washer down inside there. That's where the centrifugal clutch is. And that's the bearing that that goes after. Then I'm going to take my armature, I'm going to slip my armature down in to that, to that bearing, into that hole. I've got that in. And now, um, now I've, I've paid attention to line up my holes. Inside the motor you'll see there's kind of a, um, you can see where the bolts come through here in these square little slots right there. Okay, for reassembly here, what I suggest you do is you line up your back cover here and you want to pay attention to make sure that your wires on the inside are out of the way so they won't catch on anything. And uh, then I'm going to put my spring in the, in the front. The spring goes behind this bearing where the centrifugal thing is. And drop this in. That's mounted. Then I'm going to take my back cover. It doesn't particularly matter where it goes. And I'm going to line this up. And I'm going to pay especially close attention to the, the rod that's coming through here by the um, capacitor. It's really important that you find those slots where the uh, screws go through. Otherwise, it's a little tough to, to go in. What I mean by slots, the little opening inside the inside the motor housing that they go right through. All right, so we got those in. I'm just gonna tap this down. Okay, and now we can go and uh, put our nuts on the back end here. Okay, so we have rewired our motor. I mean, sorry, not rewired. We've put new bearings in it. 
Now we'll just do a little test with it and see if it actually runs good. Now obviously I'm keeping my hands out of the switch box area there. And what I prefer to do is turn the switch on and then I can just plug it in, unplug it. Yeah, it sounds good. We're all good. So, so there we go. Now we've got our bearings replaced. Now we're just going to kind of reverse our process. We're going to put this, uh, um, this, uh, fan back on and, uh, put this all back together. So I'm going to do that right now. Get my fan, drop that on here. And what I'll use here is I'll just use again a socket. Um, Clip ring, clip ring right here, goes on the fan. Fan guard, goes on the back. It's really pretty simple to do this. Now I'm going to switch this up here. Um, get our plate. Now the position of the plate does matter. So when I'm looking here and I'm looking at the Everclean, I want to position it so this motor mount guard is generally towards the outside. Um, and this is the bottom of the Everclean. It's going to go where this, um, where the Output is so it's going to go really like that. So if I want the motor mount to be going to the outside and I want the capacitor out of the way, that's where I'd want it, just like this. There we go. Get my bolt here. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is put the motor back on this, and um, then we'll get the drum back on. Be good to go. That disc, by the way, it cannot be di retrofitted on the uh, the uh, old design one. There's not enough casting for it, so that only works on the newer style. Big thing, though, we found is. The issue about leaking through the motor is an issue of how much oil do you have blasting through the thing. Um, because if you got too much going through, it's going to overload the ability for the thing to flow back into your saw, and you're going to get an issue of leaking over that dam. Some, uh, 
ultra black and uh, re-silicone this. I'll just clean a little bit of this off here. I'll just put a little bit of wick. Probably more than I need to use, but... One of the most important places to use the ultra black on this older style of Everclean is that plug that goes inside that blocks the dam, the access to the set screws. That's kind of your most important place to put the um, ultra black. Not a beautiful job, but awesome job. Okay, now we're to the step of putting our drum back in. So we got our drum here, and we want to look, make sure that we've got our set screws out. And um, some of you know that when an Everclean gets shipped, if UPS beats it up too much, it can actually bend the shaft of the uh, motor. And so hence, we're real cautious of making sure that those things are well protected in shipment so that the drum, if it gets that kind of force, doesn't have a problem. So what I do is I turn the motor shaft so that we don't use any keyway. This keyway is not necessary in this at all. I'm just going to slip this in and I'm putting a set screw to the front so when I look in this port here, I can see when that set screw comes in and whether I'm down far enough. So this will just kind of slip onto the shaft. And I'm just looking, and I need to actually get a headlight. That usually works best for this, is a headlight that allows me to light up the, the port and see when I'm down far enough. And my favorite tool is just the back end of a, of a soft mallet to tap this thing down back onto the shaft. And I'm just looking for when my set screw comes into alignment with that port. So then I know that I'm down far enough. Hopefully this is still recording. So I'm now down enough where I should be able to get my Allen wrench in here and get it right in the Allen wrench. There we go. And that's kind of centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snug this Allen wrench down, Allen screw down. There's two, remember. So there's one. It doesn't have to go super tight, but snug it enough. Then I'm going to leave it and I'm going to find my second one. There it is. And I got to get on the top of it and snug it down as well. And it's really the alignment of the set screws to this hole is really what sets your um, the correct depth for the drum. There we go. Tighten that down a little bit more. Okay, so there we go. So I've got those two tightened down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire this up 
make sure that I don't have any shaking or excessive vibration because that would tell me I would have something wrong with the with uh, the alignment or the assembly. So here I'm going to turn it off, plug it in. That's smooth. So, you know, there we are. We're back up. We're rebuilt. The only last step I'm going to do is put that plug in with a bunch of silicone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wrench and I'm going to put a lot of uh, silicone on this thing. So I'm going to be very generous with the silicone. Plug doesn't have to be tight in there, it just needs to make sure that it has a good seal. And you want to let it sit for 24 hours, obviously, before you run it. And there we are. So that is how to replace the bearings on an Everclean. Let us know if you got any questions. I hope that helps you be able to get through this job. It's not a hard job to do. All Evercleans over time are going to need it because you're going to wear out um, stuff. Now, also, when you're in here, what you may want to do is replace the um, replace your seals, your rubber O-rings, because even though you know we use a good quality O-ring, it's going to get eaten by the uh, mineral oil over time. So. Replacing the O-rings is easy. We got them in stock. They're really cheap. And I would suggest you just replace these O-rings on the bulkhead fitting so that you got when you go back onto your saw, you got no risk of it leaking. And I'll show you just briefly how you do that. You're basically going to pull this off. You see the O-rings are just sitting in there in those slots. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small screwdriver, pop the old ones out, and then I won't put a new one in because it'll be pretty obvious for you guys to do it. But Basically, you know, you get your old O-ring out, out of the slot. It's after they've been sitting for a while, and they get a little compressed. I'm going to use a smaller screwdriver. Here we go. Come on, there we go. It starts to come. Pull it out. Pull these little ones out as well. Just replace them you'll save yourself some hassle of leaking and that kind of stuff by doing that. The one thing I didn't show you when I put this together is you do want to put also in these four bolts here, you want to put ultra black up in the threads on those bolts because that, uh, if there's any particular porousness in the casting, those go in fairly deep, that will eliminate any kind of leaking for you. But that's basically it. It's pretty simple to do. Now, if you like that video on how to rebuild your Everclean, I'd ask you to like it for one, two, subscribe. Um, both those things tell us that these videos are being valuable for you and it encourages us to be able to make more for you because obviously they're paying the ass to make the videos, especially in a hot warehouse, but we want you to be able to really have good success with your Highland Park equipment and we really appreciate you doing business with us.